If it's rained in the last two or three days, do not get in the water. This phrase, urban runoff, is something somewhat ubiquitous in the media, but I don't think a lot of us really knows what that means. So New York City has 14 wastewater treatment plants for the runoff from businesses and homes, but when it rains, those plants get overwhelmed when they have to bypass the rainwater and the untreated sewage. It can come from a person overwatering their lawn, it can come from a city uh, overwatering a park, but it basically is a conglomerate of water that flows into the ocean. Whether it's rain or it comes from hosing off driveways or sprinklers, and it you know runs over our built environment, our roofs and our sidewalks and our streets. It picks up everything on a way. It picks up pet waste, it picks up brake dust from your car, oil from your cars, just about anything it can touch, and it transports it down to the ocean environment. Everything washes down, off the environment, off the streets, down the storm drains, and creates pollution problems in the ocean. The individual groups that are most affected by urban runoff and the ill effects of that tend to be surfers, ocean goers, beach goers, divers, even fishermen. A lot of times after storms, when there's a lot of big push of urban runoff goes into the ocean, that's when the waves are really good. And uh, if, if you've been waiting around for a month for good waves, there's not a lot that are gonna keep surfers out of the water. What are the negative implications of, of this runoff? Well, you, you get sick if you come into contact with it. It's got bacteria and it. it's got other contaminants that can literally make you sick or God forbid even kill you. First of all, there's bacteria that can uh, definitely uh, affect ears, nose, and throat to humans. It can uh, cause rashes, eye infections, ear infections, sinus infections. There's also viruses that come down and then of course heavy metals, anything industrial from, you know, that might come off a car or from industry can uh, be transported and it's just generally really nasty, toxic soup. We always push for better water treatment. Now there's 14 treatment plants. You know, the last 10 years alone, there's probably been $20 billion spent on improving the water quality here in New York City. The incentives that the state of California give to homeowners, to municipalities, cities, to uh, be way more efficient with how they use their water in their, uh, in their gardening or their landscape. You can use the storm water to grow crops on rooftops to green up parks, to put pervious surfaces that let the water percolate down into your parks. You can redo your streets so that the water goes down into the soil underneath the streets. Keep it out of the sewers. Make it a resource, not a waste. We can rethink our landscaping and use ocean-friendly gardens, which reduce the amount of water and runoff, adding ways for water to soak into the soil and restoring those functions. You know, this was an industrial waterfront at one time. This didn't used to belong to people. Now you got boat clubs on the Gowanus Canal. If you spend the money to improve the water quality, people come and enjoy it, they start to own it, they start to love it, and then you get more protection, and it's kind of like they call it a virtuous cycle, go from one good thing to the next.